Teach Hospice Care was founded in 1991 by Dr Wink White, a local GP. He was concerned that people dying in Luton and South Bedfordshire weren't receiving the care they deserved. Later, Dennis Keach supported us to deliver our children's services throughout Hertfordshire, Bedfordshire and Milton Keynes. Here at Keach, we have an adult inpatient unit, a specialist daycare service working with people with a terminal diagnosis, and our children's services working with terminal and life-limited children and young people and their families. We're a voluntary organisation with over 70% of our funding coming from the community in which we serve. Our nurses are special people and without them Keach Hospice Care would not be the wonderful place that it is. Um, I decided to be a nurse when I was five years old. I was the classic kid with the Christmas present, the stripy uniform and everything when I was five. It was my mother was a, a nurse and my father was a doctor so it was obvious I was going to be heading into that direction. It was kind of brought about by my dad was really quite poorly and um, having brought up children as well that had an influence on it and um, I wanted to care, I wanted to give something back basically. Actually I wanted to be a midwife originally. I never got in the course so I chose children's nursing and just loved it and Never look back, actually. You either are, or you know, you either want to, or you don't. It's a gut thing, you know. I mean, I knew from being three that I wanted to be a nurse. Background experience. It was partly wanting to do something a little bit more meaningful um, in the world. <laughs> One of my cousins is a midwife, so I think because she was talking a lot about it, I was just thinking, oh yeah, that might be something. However, during my nurse training, I got to see a birth and everything it entails to be a midwife, and I thought, no. <laughs> you know, I was going around tucking all my dolls and teddies up at three and wrapping my mum up in bandages and <laughs> doing all sorts of bizarre things. <laughs> Not really. Um, but I just, I knew all the way along. I think personal experience, my, my dad died, and um, I think I thought, actually, um, I don't know anything about that sort of nursing. I'd quite like to... Um, you know, use the skills that I've built up in that area and obviously to learn as well, so, yeah. It's no good coming to somewhere like this, working in this environment, if you prefer to work on your own. Um, you have to be able to support one another. You know, working here particularly it is quite difficult because people die, children die, um, and we um, deal with the families who are left, uh, who are suffering and um, who've been bereaved, and so that builds a bond. Between us. Very close, very close team here and um, very much rely on each other for support. There is unity um, between sort of the team, there has to be because it's really demanding emotional work. I think you have to work really close and you have to be able to talk to your colleagues about what happened because it's not always easy working here. And, and particularly emotional support when times can be quite trying on the unit but I don't know very much so we're a very tight team here. If you come downstairs into palliative care centre, you'll be faced with lots of happy faces. Um, it's always a lovely atmosphere down there, but the reality is that it's a really, really tough job. Yes, his name was Alan, um, and this was his room, and he had a little twinkle in his eye and full of mischief, and he'd press the buzzer, and if you'd had the day off, and you'd come, he'd go, where have you been? And you used to have to tell him, well, I've been off for the day, and I'm back, well, about time. And he'd give you a little reprimand. Or you'd look at him and say, are you in pain? No, I'm not. He'd say, yeah, I think you are, aren't you, Alan? And he'd go, a little bit. But he was a lovely chap, really lovely. You just wanted to take him home. I think all of us would have took Alan home for the, the weekend because he was just full of fun. Yeah, lovely chap. But, uh, yeah... Yeah, so some, some stick with you, <laughs> that you can't, you can't quite let them go, no, but this was Alan's room, <laughs> yeah, and he had a little wispy hair, bless him, but he, you almost forgot really that he was a patient, it was just like he was just one of your friends, <laughs> because he was no trouble. And he'd sit and chat with you, and, but he remembered, he remembered you and odd bits that you'd said to him. And he'd then say to you a few days later, oh, did you have the weekend off? What did you do then? And, oh, yes, you've said you've got a family. How many children have you got? And you think, oh. yeah. So you do meet some lovely, lovely people.
Yeah, we're very lucky. From a difficulty point, it's always difficult, I think is the honest answer, um, because we all feel. You have to, to do the job well, you have to be able to feel a certain level of emotion that your patients are feeling. It is when the children die. Um, because that's the worst thing that can happen to a family. I think the fact that we get really close to the families and the children and when they then die, and then that's kind of the cut-off for us because we then don't see them again, I think that's really hard. We're around to look after the children so that they're comfortable and that they die with dignity and that they're peaceful. Um, so it's, it's a double-edged sword, you, you, you know, the worst thing that's going to happen. However, if they're going to die, then we are able to help the children be as comfortable as, as possible and to die peacefully. Disengaging from the emotional side at, at the end of a shift sometimes is quite difficult if you've had a really trying shift because it's not just the patient in the beds that you're actually looking after, it's the family and all the extended friends and family that you're looking after at times. Sometimes we, we get a young family or a younger person through the door, that's tough. Somebody maybe with children the same age that you have, that's really tough because obviously you do look at your own mortality and think that could be me. Uh, so in terms of saying goodbye, um, we, we try and help the family say goodbye to their child. So, um, you know, talking about what they've achieved in their lives, um, what life's been like, because life is very difficult for the families. It's hard, 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 um, which is why Keech is so important to them. I don't think you can ever prepare yourself and being here for almost 10 years now, it, it doesn't make the situation easier at all because some people will say, oh, you've been there for so long and it must get easier with time, but it, it doesn't. It's just, I think of it that way. The child doesn't suffer anymore. Um, it's hard for the parents and I think that's the bit that, that gets us more than anything else, to be honest. And we just try and talk to people, you know, actually say what's happening because some people will be in denial that actually we you know this is something that isn't happening we don't want it to be happening you know, this can't be happening to us our child surely this child won't die and um so it's about sometimes it's about saying you know upfront stuff that's you know this is real this is really what's happening i think we're all human at the end of the day so you can be as professional as you want, um, but sometimes some situations and some people will always touch you, so all of us will go and have a cry at some point. My name is Nathan Vanstone Howe, I'm the uh, music therapist here at Keach Hospice. Uh, music therapy is really important for um, the children and families and adults that we see here. Um, it gives them a chance to express themselves about a very difficult and sometimes quite overwhelming feelings and doing that through a safe and containing um, environment um, such as music. We've got a music therapist that does sessions up here. Music therapy is very important um, because it can help children deal with their emotions without necessarily thinking about them. Um, it can help children that aren't able to express themselves verbally, um, you know, ex express what, how they're feeling. Um, and it can be a very good sensory um, tool. They can just play and make noises and be stimulated by the noise. There's one child um, who was um, having very angry outbursts, um, especially towards his uh, mum. And so he would come into the music therapy sessions and he would be having these kind of anger outbursts, but through the music. And um, I had to set quite firm boundaries at the same time. Uh, there would be times where it would almost be like I would have to stop the session if, uh, if it continued. It was just. And um, yeah, so we, through the music, he was able to kind of express this anger. And then I also heard that at home, he was, these anger tantrums had practically stopped. I think he only had one in the time that um, he had been seeing me. Is, it's a tough job no matter where you work. Um, I think to work in an organisation like Keech um, when you're dealing with people who are dying 
You need to have a huge degree of compassion uh, and empathy. You need to be able to work as a team and um, support each other uh, also because the work it, uh, is tough. I hope the film has given you an insight into how important Keach Hospice Care is to the people who need our support at the end of their lives.